Okay, guys, we're a few minutes uh, late here, and uh, we're here for discussing uh, basically the orchestration tools and uh, the various options and models uh, that exist uh, in the market today. And I know that uh, at least uh, as I am, there is some confusion because there is some overlap, there is uh, some level of integration that you would expect, uh, there is different thoughts on how you approach that. And uh, we gathered here the group of experts that will help you to kind of uh, address some of those questions. I will kind of start with uh, stimulating some questions at the beginning, but the real idea here is that I'll be just, you know, here to help you ask the questions. Uh, and again, we have, I think, a very good list of uh, people from the panelists here. Uh, we'll start with a quick introduction. So first of all, my name is Nati Shalom, the CTO and founder of Gigaspaces, the company behind Cloudify, which is another orchestration tools, hence why I'm here. We'll go with you. Uh, John Yee, Cloud Solutions Architect for Rackspace. Hi, I'm Georgi Akrakverso from Mirantius. Hi, I'm uh, Steve Baker. I'm a developer on the Heat Project, uh, work for Red Hat. And I'm Florian Haas, uh, consultant and co-founder at Hestexo. Okay, so we'll start with the obvious question, I think, first, which is uh, what would be the tools, and by tools, I mean configuration management like Chefman Puppet, obviously orchestration like Heat, uh, there is Dockers, uh, Docker, sorry. Uh, uh, there is other tools that, are, that you, know, you could uh, even come up with your own. Uh, what approach should I use to choose the right one? When would you use each one of them and when you wouldn't use them? So we'll start uh, in the order. Well, actually, let's start with Florian. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for putting me on this spot, Nati. I always appreciate that. Uh, so I think uh, the, the, the first thing that we should uh, consider when we, when we take a look at this whole array of tools uh, is what are they really built for? Are they built for actually deploying and orchestrating uh, an infrastructure as a service platform? Are they built for deploying applications on those? Uh, are they built for um, even uh, building uh, our platform in the first place and, and distributing packages or, or, or gold master images and that sort of thing? So uh, when we have this discussion, the first thing that we should really do is, uh, and this applies not just to uh, this panel here, but pretty much any discussion that we have about these tools, is what is it that we're actually really talking about that we want to talk about first? Um, and uh, for example, one thing that we could uh, start out uh, would be when we take a look at how do we actually want to deploy our OpenStack cloud? What do we want to be able to do and in what way do we want to uh, automate the actual deployment of our OpenStack infrastructure? And there's multiple ways of doing that and maybe we want to uh, enumerate some of those here. So maybe John wants to start with his favorite. What's your favorite way of deploying OpenStack? Yeah. Deploying OpenStack, huh? oh, okay. Um, well, as a test, the dev stack, right, <laughs> is about the easiest way to go and essentially, uh, you know, that gives you a working copy that you can, well, working system that you can actually go and take a look at and uh, kick the tires. And for, for a lot of folks, like, a lot of things that I do with it is experimentation just to take a look at stuff and from a development perspective, you know, that's what you need. You don't necessarily... So, so a question uh, to the audience here. How many people here are using dev stack versus... Let's start with DevStack. Raise the hand. Leave your hand open if you're using DevStack for okay. a production OpenStack cloud. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. We have, a, we have a smart audience. That's fantastic. So how many people are using RDO, for example? Uh, quite a few. Okay. So I think you got a partial uh, V on that. So it looks like see, people are using something else for, their, for that initial experience. Uh, well, there, there's always Chef also, right? So I okay. know that. Um, so I, I know Matt has actually done quite a bit with the OpenStack uh, Chef uh, configuration or cookbooks. Okay, so, so DevStack first, option. Chef would be the second option. Right. Steve. Yep, so I'm of the opinion that, I mean, like Florian, you should use the appropriate tool for the appropriate job. And, and I think the orchestration and software configuration appear on superficially to be similar, but they are actually very quite different problem domains, and they do deserve separate tools, uh, one to do orchestration, one to do software config. Um, so as an orchestration guy, um, you know, we've got orchestration covered, but because we're orchestrating the compute, which then has to be configured, you know, we, did, we need to do a good job of enabling um, a number of techniques to do that con configuration. Um, so yeah. Yeah, so, let me slightly change the focus from like 
uh, uh, trying to... You don't want to answer the question, reframe it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. But actually, I want to go back to the that original... That wasn't the right question. question. The yeah, right question so is, uh, how we actually select the proper tools, and actually the answer is simple usually. It's like use your common sense, and uh, another way to find out what is the proper tool f for you is actually to check uh, what is environment outside the OpenStack. Because uh, you do not deploy OpenStack in vacuum. You have something already. And usually, if you have a huge like enterprise infrastructure, you have like change, man uh, change management tools, uh, CMDB database, like support uh, system. And sometimes it actually makes sense to check what tool will like uh, better integrate with your existing infrastructure to operate with this OpenStack, not only to yeah, let's answer. Let's show the audience a little bit. Do you feel that you got an answer to that question? And if not, uh, rephrase the question, uh, or we rephrase should we move question? on? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll move on. I think that was the voice here, uh, the non-voice, actually. And uh, again, no, don't be shy. Uh, feel free to ask a question. So the next question is to Steve. Uh, would you change the same answer that you just gave if you're a private cloud guys versus a public cloud guys? Yeah, so, well, you know, it, Every cloud is different. In private cloud, you have more control over, over infrastructure. So if you want to use a particular technique, you can uh, heavily lean on your local operators to, uh, to, to give you whatever you need, um, whereas you might not have that same uh, flexibility in a, in, a, in a public cloud. Um, so yeah, yes, you, you, you can and should potentially do things differently. Um, at the same time, it would, it's, it's, it's nice to have as much consistency across your, your platforms as, as practical. So, I for think, example, in I the case, if, sorry, go ahead. If, there, I, if I can add something to that, I think something that's also very important here is to consider the scale of your cloud. Um, and, uh, and that's where this whole idea of this is the perfect tool for deploying OpenStack under all circumstances completely breaks down. Uh, if you are a public cloud provider like Rackspace or like, uh, like HP Cloud Services, yes, it does make perfect sense for you to run two layers of an OpenStack cloud. Uh, and HP calls that the under cloud and the over cloud because that greatly facilitates your public cloud management. If you're looking at the tools that these guys are building, you may very well come to the conclusion that, hey, for my scale, um, that's actually not needed at all because you're not running a public cloud with hundreds, hundreds of thousands of, 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 of nodes and, and cores. Uh, in, a, in a way, it's very equivalent to uh, about five or six years ago, everyone started adopting the uh, MySQL database optimization techniques that worked really well at Facebook. And people needed to be reminded that, hey, guess what, you're actually not Facebook. Um, and and a, a lot of that is, is true here as well. And uh, I think another thing that's really important is uh, if you're familiar with specific tools that you would like, chances are that you are going to be able to manage OpenStack with them fairly well. Uh, if you like Chef, you can deploy OpenStack with Chef. You can manage your workloads within your cloud uh, with Chef if you choose to do so. Uh, if, you, uh, if you're a puppet person, like I'm not ashamed to say, I am. I love Puppet. I think it's great. Uh, then you might want to deploy your OpenStack cloud with Puppet. Um, the, I mean, keep me honest here, guys. I think they are, they're very comparable in, in terms of their support uh, for OpenStack. Uh, and they're both like, very, very useful and handy tools. So um, just as a, as a word of encouragement, if you're thinking this is the right tool for me and this is what works for me, use it for OpenStack. But please. Don't roll your own. It's probably really wasted effort to reinvent the, uh, reinvent the wheel because of the number of really, really good wheels have already been invented for this. So I, if I summarize that thread, I would for that contribute from, to the stuff that's there, make it better. Yeah. So, so a quick summary of that thread is that it depends. And it depends whether you're trying OpenStack first. That's the classic answer, right? It depends. Mm -hmm. um, if, you're a first, if, if that's your first attempt, uh, you probably would want to use something like DevStack. Uh, if you already uh, kind of have an investment in tools uh, in your organization and you have already in placement for other purposes, Chef and Puppet, that's probably going to lead your decision. 
Um, it also depends, uh, based on what Florian said, on the size of the deployment and the complexity of deployment. And uh, also, uh, to Steve's point, and I think also to Florian's point, whether you're uh, building the stack, or, uh, the bare metal uh, side, or uh, you're deploying onto an open stack. So that might change a little bit the tools that you're choosing to do bare metal provisioning versus application orchestration versus uh, configuration management. Uh, just to a uh, question for the audience, uh, just raise the hand. How many people are using Chef here? Good. Uh, how many people use Puppet? Well, uh, that's what I sensed. Uh, so we have majority for Puppet in OpenStack uh, community. Uh, how many people are using Docker? That's new. Uh, SaltStack, Ansible. Okay, so I think we got a good ratio of which Triple one are popular. I would say Puppet first, Chef second, then Docker, then SaltStack. Uh, that I think is the kind of uh, ratio I without to counting. Add yes. Though. So if this is your first deployment and you're actually like looking to actually uh, implement this in your organization, I mean, I think I might be wrong. The very first thing you should do is actually DevStack because you need to be familiar with all the different components. You have to have a familiarity with the APIs. And there's a certain part of me that, you know, when you're actually learning or taking a look at a new uh, deployment of something that you're unfamiliar with, I mean, it doesn't make any sense, even if you're a chef expert, to try to deploy an application that you have, you know, or, you know, a, a system or a platform that you have no experience with. So I think, in my mind, I'm like thinking if this is the very first time that you've actually ever, like, consider deploying anything. I mean, you'd want to do it with DevStack or something very easy to just get familiar with the APIs that are available, familiar with the different projects that are there. I mean, I be, might be wrong, but that's, that's I nice. actually Florian totally, nodding I, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I totally disagree with that. Actually, so <laughs> uh, I, I think so. If you're uh, if you're if you're looking if if you're interested in contributing to OpenStack, if you're interested in understanding how you know the various Python modules work together and and, and all that, DevStack, great, awesome. It's a great way to you know get your hands dirty uh, on, on on actually hacking OpenStack. And by the way, it greatly facilitates being an OpenStack contributor. And for that, I, I, I do use DevStack. But if you're actually looking to deploy uh, like a, even a mini cloud, a POC, why does it have to be DevStack? You can do that really, really nicely with Puppet. You could do it really nicely with Chef. Um, there are images out there for you that can you, you can basically deploy. Um, I'm currently kind of waiting for when are we finally going to get you know the first mainstream hardware vendors that are just going to uh, bless us with pre-installed OpenStack controller and compute network nodes. That would be kind of nice. Um, there are multiple. Yeah, I know, but they're not, it, it, they're not the big established ones at this point with their, with their um, and, it, and for them, and where they are, it's not the, uh, it's not a very core part of their product portfolio. Yeah. Of course, they're testing this, but I'd like, I, I'd actually, I'd like to see more than that because it would, you know, make it but, easier to. But th so this is the one thing, though. But doesn't that make the assumption that everybody has full knowledge of Puppet, full knowledge of Chef when they deploy it, right? And my my biggest issue. I don't is think you need full knowledge of Puppet to do a Puppet module. I think there's a learning curve. And, and, and do an I actually think there's speaking. a learning curve. So Was that? I, I think there's a learning curve. Yeah. You, this okay. is the so first got, time uh, you've ever deployed. The first disagreement in the panel, which is good. <laughs> this is good, right? Uh, panel Debate. versus DevStack. Uh, the, the next question is really, uh, we talked about versus, like Docker versus Chef versus whatever. Uh, as we know, uh, there is some integration already in place, for example, with Heat and Chef and Puppet. I know that we've done the same thing with Cloudify for a while. And actually, I've seen that, the, 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 the joint, actually, integration working pretty well. So I, I wanted to ask Steve uh, if you could comment on the versus versus integration and whether there is a sweet spot for each technology, even if there is an overlap in your view? Yeah, so I think if, you or, if you're already using a configuration tool and you're really familiar with it, by all means, um, embrace that when you, when you start moving into, into heat and, and choosing what you, what you do the co software config part with. Um, if you haven't or if you, you know, you're slightly indifferent about your tool, um, I would at least consider image-based uh, deployments where, um, where you split your configuration into two phases. One is the image building phase, where you, when you build something and upload it to Glance. Um, that's really the, the only way you can be absolutely sure what, what, your boot, what you boot has what you want on it. Um, and then the, the, the orchestration and configuring part 
when you actually start your application, it's, it's really just a sprinkling of fairy dust to bring it to life. Um, so then the question is, how do you build the image? Well, if it's a Docker image, you, you know, use a Docker file. Um, if it's a real OS image, um, you know, there's, there's, there's a few tools out there. And it could be that these traditional configuration tools have a place in the image building phase. Um, interestingly, um, th there was an attempt to use the, the, the Puppet OpenStack scripts to, to do the image building part of the, um, of the, the, the triple O image. Um, it turned out that they required so much refactoring that it, it wasn't really worth the effort. Um, so, so I think for traditional mature configuration scripts, um, if you want to go down this path, there's a big refactoring where you split it up between the, the image building phase and the configuration phase. Um, but for, for, for new scripts and you want to keep that tool and you want to build images, then maybe that's a good way to do it. Uh, I think it's too early. So, to so say that's that. actually interesting. I wanted to rephrase what you just said to make sure that I think I got it and, uh, and ask a few more questions on the panelists on that point. So basically what you're saying is that if you want uh, uh, consistent deployment, uh, dynamic configuration like Chef and Puppet, and even the software stack in, in Heat would probably wouldn't get you to that point because uh, there is a lot of dynamicism that happens during the provision of the VM and so forth, and that might not be deterministic in certain times, uh, be, depending on the resource that you're trying to uh, capture. Uh, and if you want a deterministic uh, deployment, then you would use a VM, and in that case you would use configuration management to create the VM and not as part of the deployment. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so, I mean, there's, there's a lot of what you want to do is minimize the amount of entropy in your system. And, you know, sources of entropy are, you know, network failures during package downloads and, you know, um, uh, repos that, that get new versions of software right in the middle of an upgrade. Um, really, there's a, there's a whole collection of sources of entropy can, that can be basically eliminated if you move to an image-based deployment, um, especially if you add a, uh, you know, a validation step where you bring up your image in a, in a, uh, a contained environment and check that it's, uh, that it's valid. Good. So I'll stop here to see if there are questions from the audience. May I also add? Yes, of course. Sorry. So uh, actually, uh, let me slightly like uh, argue with Steve. Yeah, <laughs> because like he is like staying within open stack boundaries, but there are a lot of stuff uh, outside, and there are a lot of automation uh, tools, and not only automation tools, but some. Uh, provisional system, which actually on top of open s s stack. And as I see right now in Steve's world, so heat is the first. So you have like everything in heat template. You ask heat to deploy this template. It invokes software components, and once you're done. But actually, very often. Again, in, in huge like enterprises and not so huge enterprises, you have your like outside systems, which like integrated with other enterprise tools, and usually they actually initiate uh, the deployment. And user not necessarily knows that he will use OpenStack at all. So it, it's up to the, this upper level system to decide uh, whether. It should go and generate uh, heat template, or it can like uh, uh, directly initiate like chef deployment, and chef will execute this heat uh, deployment. So there are yeah, a that, lot that's of a, like that's an excellent point. Actually, uh, the more I think about what you just said, I wanted to kind of bring a question uh, that is related to that. And and the question I think was. Uh, nicely articulated in one of the keynotes from uh, the guy from Microsoft, I forgot his name, forgive me, uh, who was talking about you know, the uh, uh, Star Wars uh, as an analogy and how the community should also embrace ecosystem versus trying to own everything uh, on its own. And, and there is this uh, kind of interesting thought here that I think uh, Gregory mentioned is that how much of the tool set are things that uh, should be live in the ecosystems. For example, we wouldn't think of Chef or Docker being part of OpenStack, right? And still, a lot of users would be using those tools, uh, and they're not necessarily going to be, or it makes sense to make them part of OpenStack, and how much it needs to be an OpenStack native thing to actually be accepted in the community and so forth. So, so the question is, 
are we targeting, for example, here to be more of an ecosystem play, which means that it needs to do enough so that other tools can be on top of that? Or HIT is going to be, for example, the things that does everything, your orchestration, your software orchestration, you know, and, and there's going to be one solution that does all of the things that are related to orchestration. So it's a, it's a very different philosophy if you think about it that way. I think that's uh, the way Gregory mentioned that, or versus you think about it as there needs to be one thing that does that, they need to do it well, and it needs to be an open stack native world. Uh, I think those are the, diff the two thoughts. Uh, let's hear Steve on that. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting about how attitudes of what, what, what is a, a, a fundamental piece of infrastructure changes over time. You know, when, when we started heat, orchestration was very much outside that. Um, but, you know, now that, you know, other projects like Sahara and Trove and Triple O are actually building on top of heat and they actually need heat to do their orchestration parts, um, heat goes, it's going lower down the stack and it's, it's starting to make more sense that it, it, it can be a core thing. Um, so, you know, but it's, it's still not mandatory to use. You can, you can still configure from outside. You can still use other orchestration tools. Um, just, you know, just like there's alternatives to, you know, storage in your, in your cloud, for example. So, yeah, it's, being, being core doesn't mean it's mandatory. That's the only way to do it. Yeah. Okay. Again, I'll stop here for a second just to see if there are questions from the audience. You're being too quiet, which means that it's either the topic is boring or the panelist is boring or me not doing a good job. So, uh, let's see if uh, someone raised your hand uh, for a question. Yes. We have a volunteer. Yes, a volunteer. Applause to that, Hi. yes. Hi. So it's interesting to me, and I wonder how many of the folks in the room, there's some funny distinction between orchestration and basically deploying some software and configuring it. There's some gray area. I don't think orchestration is really a, a term of art in a precise sense. And, and I think we're, in the context of OpenStack, we may be struggling with that a bit, where the ability to manage the resources in a cloud could be seen as orchestration, but when we get out to the, the enterprise level of the world, orchestration is about regulatory compliance and audits and all that sort of thing. Just curious on your thoughts on that. And sort of so, so but but, that is, but yeah. that is, that's exactly what something like, uh, like Heat in, in OpenStack actually facilitates. One of the things that's really, really nice is uh, the ability to define an essentially arbitrary complex stack of various types of resources and being able to deploy them exactly as described, exactly as defined in the heat template. So what that enables, uh, enables someone that uses this stack to do is to say, hey, look, I have deployed this stack in this way, in this manner, it's been documented this way, it's, it's perfectly, uh, it, it, we, can, we can replicate it wherever we'd like. Um, and that actually is a much better uh, description of the system as a whole in order to enforce, for example, compliance or enable auditing. Anyone else wants to answer that question? Um, yeah, so, I mean, this has become an argument about semantics, which, you know, isn't that interesting, but, you know, we've, we've we're in the orchestration program, the HEAT project, and we've, we've determined that orchestration is about uh, in invoking cloud resources using their APIs, wiring them together, and giving you a, a, a fully working thing. Um, and, and, and if it's not that, then it's not necessarily orchestration. Just, just, just for the purposes of OpenStack, that's the, the definition we've gone for, yeah. Yeah, but I would say that was very, precise definition of what uh, actually HIT does because uh, in your HIT template you define multiple uh, different uh, resources which are not necessarily collocated and there are a lot of mo uh, moving parts and the idea of HIT uh, engine exactly to orchestrate and make sure that those moving parts are doing this in the right sequence. So it's like a conductor who orchestrates the whole orchestra, which has like multiple different like, layers. So, I mean, I agree with you, actually. It is really confusing as far as what the term orchestration is. I, I did um, 
Uh, I was a consultant for the operations orchestration product for HP, so that's very enterprisey. And that was all about workflow automation. It didn't even really deal with. And then here we're talking about heat, which is really talking about you know composing these different resources and being able to deploy it. So, yeah. uh, and you know, to a certain extent, we're even talking about you know um, more web services enabled systems, service orchestration in terms of you know how they would automatically be able to add themselves into a pool or sort of, you know be removed from a pool. All these sort of like terms with orchestration, I think it's an overloaded term, and it's. You know, I, I, I totally agree with you. It just seems very, very confusing. Yeah, I mean, the, to yeah, be fair, heat, heat is a declarative representation of how you want your stack to look. Um, but the, but that's, there's a missing piece there. There's, there's, there's the, the, the workflow piece where you say, I've got a job that needs to do this, and it has a side effect. Um, that, that quite validly could be part of orchestration as well. Um, but it's, it's not specifically what heat does, but you know, something that does that could live in the orchestration program too. Yeah. There is another question here. Yes. Yeah, so um, the distinction, I guess, there is a question here. The distinction, I guess, between orchestration and configuration management is uh, orchestrating, treating actually infrastructure as code, right? Yeah. And when you have all of those resources and you have a life cycle of an application that you can deploy to that across multiple cloud providers, not just private OpenStack, but Amazon as well, with, for example, equivalents like CloudFormation, that's where you need orchestration, that's where it's really important because you have repeatability, infrastructure as code across all the providers, whatever they are. I guess the question is, what are the alternatives? So as we're talking about orchestration and not configuration management. So you have CloudFormation for AWS, you have um, Heat, um, the, uh, the IBM guys were doing some quite interesting stuff where they were extending Heat to do uh, AWS provisioning through custom resource types. Uh, I guess there's lots of other orchestrated products out there that will deal with a complex, you know, multi-resource, multi-server, multi-data center, whatever type setup. What are the alternatives compared to, to heat from an OpenStack perspective or just general orchestration? Well, Sorry, what was the question? So the question is what are the alternatives to heat? What are the orchestrators that you would use for OpenStack? Ansible okay. Salt Stack comes to mind at the very top for me. Okay. What is the answer again? Ansible Salt Ansible. Stack. Ansible Salt Stack, okay. But why? So and this is something that you know, we had kind of a discussion within Rackspace about heat and you know, Ansible's role. And there's a lot of overlap between these tools in terms of what Ansible's able to do in, in terms of like orchestrating different resources, doing something similar to heat, but Ansible is more generally applied. Like it's not just OpenStack. You can do AWS, you can do Google Compute Engine, you can do all these different things. And you know, not that heat is a, a bad project or anything. I, st I still think it's a great project. But you know, when you're actually talking about different uh, sort of orchestration tools that are out there, there also is that piece that you mentioned. How do you make it uh, something that can interrupt between different clouds? And you know, those choices become okay. Well, Heat's you know obviously it has some backwards compatibility with AWS, but if you were looking for a more general tool to be able to handle stuff like that, then do you start looking at Ansible? Do you start looking at SaltStat? Because you know, the, the orchestration piece for it doesn't just stop at the clouds. It's you know, yep. dedicated. And, and actually, uh, coming back to the IBM example that uh, I also heard yesterday that was doing uh, kind of extending here, one of the comments that immediately I heard actually from someone else in Rackspace was that, is it open source? Is it you know, have you contributed back to OpenStack? And immediately when the answer was no, no, it was uh, then it's not interesting. Kind of, you know, it wasn't explicitly like that, but that was kind of the mindset that I felt uh, that uh, came back as a response to that. And, and, and it comes back uh, to the interesting answer that you gave is that uh, your alternatives, in a way, to choosing Heat, which is very, if you like, bounded to OpenStack, was to use someone who is actually from the ecosystem. Um, so I'm trying to see if orchestration that kind of moves up the stack would go through the same flaws we've seen with web frameworks. For example, we, we all know that you know, there is so many ways to build web applications today, not one way, right? So it, there is this tendency that as we move up the stack, taste, for example, or even a flavor of the way doing things becomes an important factor versus uh, if we're going down the stack, there is usually less options on how to do things. So I'm trying to see, again, back to that question, uh, uh, if there are more options, or should OpenStack embrace more options, even competing options within OpenStack to do orchestration versus, and I think that was to your, to your question, Florian, versus we need one orchestration 
for all of the components within OpenStack. Yeah, and I'd actually like to expand that question a little bit. One of, one of the mo more heated discussions that we have in the OpenStack community are always the, um, the, the API compatibility issues, uh, where uh, tensions usually fly high, or at least uh, emotions do. Um, I have a question for you, uh, for, for, for the audience here. Um, uh, could you please raise your hand if you agree with any of the, fo well, for, with, with each of the following statements? statement by statement. Uh, would you agree with saying, it is important for me that OpenStack has an orchestration capability that is compatible with AWS? If you agree with that, raise your hand. If you agree with, it's important to me that OpenStack has an orchestration uh, capability that is compatible with VCO, raise your hand. If you're saying it's important to me that uh, OpenStack has an orchestration compatibility that understands Tosca. Raise your hand. And if you say, I'm totally happy with OpenStack's orchestration capability, I don't care about compatibility with other APIs at all, raise your hand. OK, that's actually fairly balanced. Um, it's fairly balanced between Tosca and uh, I think uh, well, I don't care about things. Yeah. All the rest was uh, very low rank, so that's interesting, actually if you think so, about so, it. So just as far as Tosca goes, we're, um, we're, we've been slowly evolving the heat model so that it aligns better with Tosca. Um, so it's, it's going to be a lot easier to, to translate between one and the other. And it's possible in the future that uh, heat will have uh, direct um, support for Tosca in the future. Um, many, many caveats around that. Yeah, so I'll come back to the Tosca question in a second. Uh, there is a question from the audience. Yes. Yeah, so my question is also about orchestration, because to me, orchestration is not only creating the servers that I need, but also they have the roles and the configuration that they need like in one step. And I've been in t attending a lot of heat talks, and it's still really not clear to me how close heat is to getting there in terms of like if I want to not only create servers, but also um, puppetize them or use them with, or like use Chef, just you know, like all in one step using all one template and not having to go through multiple. Yeah, so, so, so just to, again, to make sure that I, uh, everyone understand the question, the question was, uh, can I use Heat to do configuration management instead of Chef or Puppet, or how well the integration is with Chef and Puppet? Yeah, in conjunction with, so if I want... In conjunction with, with okay. With, like, one template, not having to deal with multiple different... Yeah, okay. So, so you, we, have, we have two options now. One, one is that uh, you do minimal configuration when you, um, when you boot your, your Heat provision servers to hand off to the Puppet or Chef Master. Um, and then from that point on, it's... It's, it's the, the master's uh, job to, to keep the configuration up to date. Um, but then it's a bit tricky, because then you've got um, sort of two sources of truth. One is the master, and one is Heat itself. Um, Heat already has all that knowledge. Um, so another option is that um, you, can, you can use Puppet and Chef to represent the configuration on boot. Um, and, and that can be mapped back to resources in your heat template that can participate in the, in the heat orchestration lifecycle. Um, so in, in that way, you get the best of both worlds. You get the configuration tool that, that you prefer to use, um, and, and it participates in the, in the, in the standard heat um, stack lifecycle flow um, so that you can uh, push updates with, through, through heat tools um, and uh, Puppet Apply and Chef Solo get invoked to, to actually make the changes on the servers. OK, there, is a, there was another question here. Um, if not, yes, is there another question? OK, so I think uh, one of the, you had a question? Yeah, yeah. one last question. Mistral is a workflow tool, which is a different uh, service in OpenStack. Yes. How comes Heat doesn't use that? Uh, because it's not integrated. Because yes. what? Yes, we, we yeah. Um, it's, it's not, it's not an, we, we can't depend on it in the Heat project until it's part of OpenStack. Um, but there's, there's been many, many times in this, during the summit where someone said, we need Heat to do this. And we say, no, uh, that's not Heat's job. Heat, heat does nouns, not verbs. Um, that needs workflow. Uh, we're expecting that will be Mistral at some point. We really, really want to use it because it solves a bunch of problems that we, are, we have decided not to solve in Heat. Um, so yeah, we're, we're looking forward to being able to do that. Uh, so I think we have uh, only one minute to do closing remarks. Uh, so I'll let uh, each one of the panelists to have its own uh, few seconds of closing remarks on where heat is, well, not sorry, uh, where orchestration in your view is going. Let's start with Florian. Uh, 
closing remarks. Or if you want to rephrase that question, I'm sure you'll do that. Uh, feel free to do that. No, my, 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 my closing remarks just for everyone are experiment, collaborate, contribute. You're here. You have a chance to make this all better for all of us. So let's do that. Yeah, let's, uh, let's change the order. Here, here, right? Yeah, <laughs> here, here. Me too. Now let's go drink. <laughs> <laughs> so, Steve, closing remark? Um, what he said. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, it's, 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 it's still relatively early days. You know, um, heat, Heat's a young project, and we've, and we've got a lot on our roadmap. So we're just going to keep on um, incrementally improving it unt until it meets more, more, of, more of your needs. Yeah. Greg? Yep. And I just uh, would like to ask uh, you guys to actually share your experience about like application and running uh, workloads on top of OpenStack so that uh, OpenStack community can understand what are the use cases which are relevant for you, but not for uh, engineers. So I mean, you know, I don't know if this is uh, not permitted, but you know, it's been in the Rackspace public cloud for some time, and we've been doing blueprint deployments. They've been working very well. To answer your previous question, if you want to try it out, it actually, there is a place where you can even kick the tires and see it actually work. So uh, in terms of like, uh, as a user, or uh, even operations or developers, it is really about kicking the tires. It's really about telling us what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. So I mean, Echoing your, your comments, it's really what we need, right? So I'll add my own uh, closing remark, uh, if I may. Uh, my view is that, that the thought of everything needs to be in OpenStack uh, needs to change. And I agree, I think, with some of the panelists here. And in my view, the thing that is missing uh, in OpenStack is actually more ecosystem projects like Docker, uh, I think even Chef and Puppet to a degree, and, all, and many others that actually, if you look, uh, doing stuff with Amazon, but are not doing the same level of investment with OpenStack. So I think the success of OpenStack would be embracing a lot of those ecosystem players into, con not necessarily even contributing code, but at least doing integration more explicitly. And that means that the OpenStack frameworks needs to invest more effort in embracing them rather than replacing them. That's my closing remark. Thank you very much, guys. And thank you very thank much you. for the panelists. Thank you.